House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Hi, today, everybody. Welcome to House to Home. I'm Jason Salas alongside Gina Campos and Liz Duenas at Remax Diamond Realty Guam. Ladies, hi, today. Hi, today. Now, I reached out to the two of you and, you know, as, as I'm so want to do from time to time, I was just, I was like, hey, you know, ladies, you know, how, how are things going over there? And you were telling me, you're like, we actually have a shortage of inventory as far as properties. And my first reaction, I was like, congratulations, that's fantastic, you know, question mark. And you were like, no, because there's a caveat. It's actually been this way for some time. And I was like, okay, that is not good. Uh, Gino, yeah. what are some of the market factors that have led to where you are right now. And can we actually say there is a housing shortage on Guam? Is that is that fair? Or is that a little melodramatic? No, that's that's absolutely fair. And that's exactly the situation. There is a housing shortage on Guam and especially affordable housing. So anything I would say under 450, which sounds ridiculous. I don't remember ever in my life looking for a home in that price range. <laughs> You know, I that's like, you know, the doctors and the lawyers and the brain surgeons and, you know, and the admirals that are stationed on Guam. I mean, that's, you know, that's high end, high end inventory, right? Uh, yeah, you would have thought so before, but now it's that's under 450 is now considered affordable because it's you can't find much else out there, especially like Liz, right? Under 300. I mean, under even under 400,000, that, that price cool. range is so competitive. Right now. Yeah. Right. So okay. uh, there, there's actually 227 houses showing mm -hmm. uh, on the, our multiple listing inventory. Of the 227, 102 are still active, which means there's a possibility you can submit offers for the 102 houses that are currently showing active, but there's 125 that are pending. So more than half of that inventory is already taken. So it makes it more difficult for a potential buyer, especially a first time home buyer to find inventory within their budget. So it's, it's really difficult at this time and it's really sad, but that, that is the current market conditions right now. And the prices have gone up. And as we were discussing, investors are paying, you know, they're investing because they want military tenants more than likely because that pays the higher um, rent and whatever they purchase. So if you're doing a, 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 the appraisers going around and looking at the values, the values would ha have gone up definitely and he would be looking at properties that have sold. So as you said, the benchmark does go up in terms of values and it's raising prices. That's- Yeah. I, I never see. realized that. So, so the, I mean, and it, I guess it is an important distinction to make that there's a difference between the people looking for a home to buy and that they would assumedly live in for a very, very long period of time because they need a place to stay and raise their family and all of that. And then the investment crowd, which is, you know, I mean, they they're taking it as a means of, you know, this might be their side business, you know, they, they fixer uppers, they may flip the property and everything like that. That That's all, that's all wonderful. But because that the investment crowd is doing it, the baseline appraisal value of the average home goes up. Well, the baseline for average, uh, uh, for the investors, yes. But then if you had, if you were buying a home and you, you wanted to move and the only thing that was available for you is 400, but you, uh, you qualify for it you would buy it. Your, your value that you just purchased has raised the benchmark. So if 350 was the average at one time, and now buyers are purchasing it higher, that has raised prices. And the appraisers look at that because there's, not, there's nothing much out there. So if you bought something for 400, that, that raises the benchmark at that for your property and others as well. And Gina, does this further create like a, a condition that you've said many times on the show, you know, you're really worried because kind of like the middle class is kind of dropping out and everything's becoming so polarized now. Yeah. So, so let me explain how these investors affect buyers that are looking to, to purchase and live in. So when, when we talk about investors, typically that investor, 80% of these investors are paying cash. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And what we're noticing is because they're paying cash, when they get, when they are competing with you, me, our average buyers who are, are, are our ability to purchase is hinged on my ability to get that bank loan. And my ability to get that bank loan is hinged on the appraisal value. So it's the appraisal value or the purchase price, whichever is lower. So if I'm competing with you, Jason and Liz, and let's say I, I know the house is at 350. So I bid 375 because I qualify for it. And I really, really want the house. And I know it's a bidding war right now. So I'm willing to go 375, okay? Now it's contingent on that appraisal report. And then let's say, let's say Jose comes in and says, hey, I'm, I'm an investor. And he throws his, his offer on the table. But let's say he says, I'll pay 375, but now I'm paying cash. cash. If the seller knows that the market value of that home is probably under 375, but the values have inched up that high just because of the demand. He's not going to look at my offer. He's going to say, forget that. Let me take the investor who's paying 375. Right. Now, why would an investor do that? Why would an investor pay more than what the market is worth? Because if they park that money into the rental property, they're going to get a lot more per month rent than they would if they left that money in the bank and collected. 0.001% of nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other- It's the lesser of, of the risks. Well, well, it's 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 not even the lesser. They're getting- Well, much the smarter more decision. Money. Huh? More money. Yeah. yeah, the strategy yeah. is I'm the getting- return. My rent per month is a higher return. Right. On so I'm going to park it in, I'm going to park it in that real estate. So, and that's how, you know, that's how you have to look at the market. If your investors are paying more than what the appraisal values are at, then that tells you the demand in the market is really high. It's you're in an awful situation. And, and we, we've been advocating that, gosh, if I were in government service, I would have a, I would sit down with the players that could really make a difference and say, Hey guys, we have a situation with our people here. Can we create some kind of public partner solution to this? Because I mean, what's causing this? Absolutely no labor. I mean, there's no labor. Uh, they're out there, but you, you can't hire somebody. And if you do, you're gonna have to wait a while. The cost of material is ridiculous right now. Mm -hmm. Concrete, rebar, everything, you name it, it's ridiculous. Uh, so labor and material, that's already half, that's already half of what's going on, right? And then, and then the other thing is getting your permits. Jace, I can't even tell you how difficult it is right now to process and get your building plans, get your maps. And all of this, all of this comes together. To and you've mentioned that before, there, there, there's, a, there's a bureaucracy and there's, there's a logistic pipeline, if you will, of things you have to go through that makes it incredibly difficult. Yeah. And, and right. by that merit, Liz, would, would, am I correct in assuming now that because there's a lot of these processes that have been created by, by people or by organizations, um, and then the thing with the uh, appraisal value going up, because of these processes, does, I hate to blame everything on, on, on the pandemic, but because of those, does this mean that the market won't self-correct as the economy continues to get better? Well, the, the, our, our, our issue right now is not an issue, it's a plus that the, the buildup is coming. It's already in progress. Mm -hmm. So in terms of pricing, there's going to be a bigger demand, uh, but we have shortage of, of inventory. So for the local buyers, you know, one of the things there's, that we're talking to some of them about is looking at the possibilities of buying land and building. But as, as Gina put it, prices are going up. So if you're looking at building, you've got to scramble and get something done. Um, I'm building, Gina's building right now as well. And I'm building one in Barragata. She's building one in Pago Bay. And the headaches associated with it, um, you know, in terms of the timelines, luckily my, my stage, uh, they've already, they're starting to, to lay the groundwork and start uh, laying the fence and the walls for the building. But 
Um, our co biggest concern, at least we have the wherewithal to go around, to work with that. But the regular consumer, the regular um, Mr. Cruz out there or Mrs. Cruz who want to build a home, they first, they, if they can't find the inventory, they're gonna have to buy land, get a contractor, and just bear in mind, if you get a contractor, unless they have uh, set plans, which makes it a lot easier, then they can start uh, the permitting process. They've got the building plans and everything, and they can move a little quicker, but the prices are going up. So Gina, I think it's what, one, what is it now per square foot to build? It was 120, 130, now it's about 150 and maybe even higher, 175 for a regular, you know, um, a, a standard sized home of maybe 12 to 1500 square feet. So it's, it's a big concern and I'm working with buyers, so is Gina. And one kind of gave up yesterday because whatever they found either had uh, setback issues, encroachment issues, probate, so they couldn't move quickly. They're already pre-qualified, but finding it within a budget that they can afford and, you know, they're pre-approved, like in the 400 price range, uh, they really, but they wanted to spend within the threes and it's hard to find something right now. And the ones that they found, guess what? There's one we were supposed to see today. Uh, they had appointments every 30 minutes. So you can imagine how many people were slated to go see that one property. Well, Gina, let me give you the last word. We got it. We literally have 20 seconds. So let me give you the last word. It's discouraging, Jason. And you, you mentioned the word self-correct. The thing is, the industry cannot self-correct because of a couple of factors. Number one, there's imposed regulations by the government. Uh, the, the government continues not to operate on full force. You know, the hours are not there. So it's going to be hard to self-correct if the public and the the government sector does not come together to help correct the situation that we are all in. It's going to take a joint effort. It's going to take people talking to each other to correct it. All right. Well, that's the word. Ladies, thank you so much for your insight. Again, a fascinating topic, I, I must say. I, I didn't even realize that like it's gotten to the level it has. Hopefully, we will be able to do something to... Um, if the market doesn't self-correct, maybe we can give it a little nudge. You know, we, we would hope. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time Thank on KUA. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.